it's really just praise and worship and prayer and we keep the room nice and dark and so it's a great space to come and just bring your worship and so that's going to be on a wednesday night so it's kind of new so make a note of that wednesday may 26th at 7 p.m okay so i'm going to pray for our offering if you have offerings you can give online you can also give on that like back box where else is standing also, you want to be Vanna White? <laughs> 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 that. For those of you joining us online, we do have an online giving. Accessnaz.com slash give. And we also have baskets up here. Okay? So let's bow our heads and pray for the offering. Dear Jesus, thank you for this beautiful day. We have an opportunity to gather with your people, your family. We bring to you this offering as a sign of our worship. Please bless it and use it for your will and purpose. Amen. Amen.
to life. Oh, source of all forgiveness, would you bring us to forgiveness? Help us to see you, Father, right here in the midst of us through the power of your Spirit. Thank you so much for this opportunity, Father, for you to reveal yourself, for you to just be among us. Would you speak to us in a powerful way today? Would you speak to us wherever we are at, whoever we are, whatever we have done? Help us to just hear a word from you that brings peace, hope, tranquility, and life. And we pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Kevin Portillo. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for that. <laughs> Hello, hi, how's it going? Nice. Uh, I am Pastor Kevin. I am one of the pastors at uh, a sister church here. If you're new here, um, this is Active Church. Um, Pastor Renee uh, just says, hey, can you just come here and preach once a month <laughs> over here? And I'm like, sure, why not? I love preaching opportunities. Um, and so Pastor Renee and uh, Mark are unable to be here with us th this morning, but we'll remember them, we'll pray for them. And so you are stuck with me. And so hopefully that's a good thing. <laughs> um, uh, have you ever needed uh, a breath of fresh air before? Uh, have you ever, were, were you ever in a situation where you were just, you know, so burdened and pressured by life or by... I don't know, water that you're drowning and you're just like trying to reach for the top and you just need that breath of fresh air? Mm. Have you ever been on the verge of vomiting? You're just about to throw up and you're just like, just breathe. <laughs> just breathe. Mm. It's not going to happen. <laughs> and then sometimes it just does happen. <laughs> or perhaps you are, uh, you landed on the floor in such a way that the wind was just knocked out of you. Have you ever had those moments? Yeah. I had it when I was a, a teenager, and it was just like you're, all the breath just comes rushing out. You're like, <laughs> and you can't breathe. You're like, I need to breathe. And then you're like, <laughs> and then you just feel that energy back again, right? Yeah. Or if you ever, um, have you ever struggled with panic attacks or anxiety attacks? And you just need, or somebody is just there, or you're just telling yourself, just breathe, just breathe. Everything is going to be okay. Or you're just in a season of depression or anger or anything for that matter. I hear a lot of the times just saying uh, to yourself, just take a deep breath and just kind of breathe it in and then breathe it out. And sometimes that's just so powerful, just breathing in. You feel energy. You feel alive. In fact, if you, I think that's the number one category of being dead. You're unable to breathe again. You breathe your last breath. So breath equals life, energy, fullness, vitality. Without breath in our lungs, we cannot be who we are. Amen. Exactly. Did you know Jesus breathes on you? Do you know Jesus gives you breaths of fresh air? And there's a story actually in scripture where Jesus does this. It's kind of weird if you kind of ask me, but here, kind of stay with me a little bit. We'll be in John chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. John chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. Jesus does something really bizarre here. He kind of, I hope he took a mint, uh, <laughs> a nice mint before he did this, because he gives a breath of fresh air, but literally from his mouth to his disciples. Here's what the word of the Lord says. John chapter 20, verse 19. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. 
After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Just go up to the next person you meet today and just be like, <sighs> Receive the Holy Spirit on you. Take a peppermint first. And for, yeah, take a peppermint first. Don't drink coffee right beforehand. You, no one likes that coffee breath. But Jesus does this. He kind of just breathes like, <sighs> he just breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. And he says this, the Father has sent me. So I ask you, church, I ask you, friends, brothers and sisters, why did the Father send the Son into the world? Why did God send his only Son to this place because Jesus said as the father has sent me the father has sent me I did not come on my own behalf I did not decide this was a good idea by myself the father said go and Jesus came to earth in the beginning of John which is one of my favorite gospels John 1 it says this it says in Christ all things came into being through Christ and in him was life even John 3.16, God, so God, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall have eternal life. John 5.26, for just as the father has life in himself, so he has granted the son also to have life. And then John 6.48, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. The bread that I give for the life of the world is my flesh. Even John 10.10 10 says, I have come to give life and to give life to the full. You see these aspects throughout the Gospel of John. Jesus is on a mission. The Father has sent him for a purpose. The Father sent him to accomplish a mission. Jesus is a missionary. He is one who is sent and he has something to give to the world, to people. Wherever Jesus went, he always gave life. Amen. He himself is life. He is the source of life. Everywhere Jesus went, all the way to meeting a woman at a well, a Samaritan woman, a woman that you don't want to see yourself associated with, one of those people, Jesus came to a woman and was speaking to her. Even the woman says, like, why are you doing this? You know, Jews and Samaritans, we don't, we don't coalesce together, right? We don't sit down and chat and have tea. But Jesus comes and sits and has conversation. Jesus heals a paralytic man of 38 years in the pool of Bethesda. Jesus feeds 5,000 people in John 6. He gives sight. He gives life. He even washes his sinful disciples' feet. Everywhere Jesus goes, you can turn to any gospel story of Jesus, and you will see him giving life. He offers a word of encouragement. He says your sins are forgiven. He says your sight has been recovered. He says everything is going to be okay. He gives breaths of fresh air where people are just suffocating where people perhaps are drowning, he comes and offers them life. So why did the Father send the Son into the world? Well, a very basic, simple answer is for life. Because this world is dead. Yes. This world is dying. This world is wicked. This world is evil. This world is dark. This world needs life. Right. Because we were created in life, for life in the beginning, but we lost life. Amen. We wanted death. And so the Father says, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no. My creation is one that was marked by life and beauty and goodness. And I will not let darkness and hell and the devil take my world, take my creation over to death. I'm going to send my son to rescue it and bring life. Thank you, Father. 
This is the ministry of the son. His ministry was one of life giving work. He came to give life. And even in our text today, Jesus shows up. This is after the resurrection. He shows up to disciples who are afraid for their lives. They're in a locked room. Jesus appears before them and he says, peace. Look at my wounds. Look at these marks of, of, these, of these marks of death on my body. Not even these wounds are victorious over me. These wounds on my body are a sign that death has lost. Life has won. Resurrection conquers all. Nothing can stop the Son of God from bringing life into this world. Not even a cross. Not even the Roman Empire. Not even soldiers. Not spears. Not nails. Will ever stop life from happening. Life is just a wave, a tsunami that is coming upon this world through the sun. And Jesus brings it. And he wins. And now he is a, a, a person that gives life. He is our God that offers new life. That's why he breathes on the, on the disciples. What's fascinating is that same word for breath, when Jesus says in the gospel, it says Jesus breathed, is the same word that's found in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. The Lord God formed a human being from the dust of the, of the ground and breathed into his nostrils yes. the very breath of life. Amen. And the man became a living being. <sighs> That same breath that in the beginning God made Adam and Eve mm -hmm. is the very same breath that Jesus breathes on the disciples yes. after his resurrection. Man. He is breathing not just a, a first life, but a second life, a renewed life, resurrection life. In Jesus is life. Mm -hmm. Why did the Father send the Son into the world? Very simply, friends, for life. In him is life. If you're suffocating, if you're under pressure, if you can't breathe, and you're just struggling to get that breath of fresh air, Jesus offers multiple breaths of fresh air every single moment, every single hour. But Jesus' ministry doesn't stop there because this is perhaps <laughs> the scariest part. Jesus adds this phrase, as the Father sent me, so now I send you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's right. Why did the Father send the Son into the world? For life. But now, Jesus sends you for life. Amen. To continue the same ministry Jesus started. His ministry is not over. This world needs even more life. Right, and right. Jesus has chosen to, you, to give life to this world through the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why he gives the church the Holy Spirit. That's why he gives the breath of new life into them. You cannot give life unless you have received life. Amen. And so Jesus gives you life. <clears throat> you see, Jesus is not here anymore, friends. The physical Jesus, the one with the wounds and the scars, we believe he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Yes. He is in heaven with the Father, praying for us, waiting for us, interceding for us. But we are now the body of Christ yes. in the world. On earth, we are Jesus with hands and feet. Mm -hmm. And Jesus gives us this mission of life. Where he provided hope, so now you have the potential and the ability to give hope. Where he provided peace, you can now give peace. Where he provided the Holy Spirit and forgiveness and life, guess what? You too can provide the Spirit and forgiveness and life itself. Glory, hallelujah. Amen. You are the very hands and feet of Jesus. There's this powerful quote that I saw that I just want to share with you. It's from a 16th century Christian by the name of Teresa of Avila. And he said, she said this, Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands through which he blesses 
the whole world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body on earth but yours. See, Paul in uh, Corinthians says something similar to this. You are ambassadors for Christ. People will associate Jesus with that. Whatever you touch, whatever you bless, it's as if Jesus himself is blessing that person, that thing, that community, that workplace through your hands. This is a high calling, friends. This is my calling. This is your calling. This is the person to your left and right calling. Yes. And probably some of you are like, you just need to listen to this guy. <laughs> All of us are called to be like Jesus. Right. We're called to be his hands and feet in oh. this messed up and broken world. Jesus is our life giver, but he chooses to work in this world through you. Amen. Yes. So where can you add value to people? Where can you add a word of encouragement? Where can you give life to somebody? Mm -hmm. Friends, we're just praying, oh Lord, would you bless them? Would you give them life? Would you help them? But we don't do anything about it. It's almost as God listens to those prayers and says, yes, I will hear your prayer. I will answer it, but I want to answer it through you. I want to answer your prayers through your hands and feet. That's right. Oh, Father, bless the people who have no resources, no things. And God is saying, yes, I'm sending you to go. You have the resources that I have given you. You have something to contribute to this world. You are life-giving ministers of Jesus Christ. Thank Amen. You, Jesus. Whatever you do, you are representing Christ. Okay. And whatever Jesus has done, all his ministries of life giving service, you can now participate in. Mm -hmm. Join us. Join this mission. Join this work that we are doing to bring life to this world. Because there's so much death, so much death out there, friends. There's so many people going towards death. So many people who are just living under burdens and sins and desires and evil passions. Death. It's bringing decay into their souls and their minds and their bodies and their hearts. So much darkness out there. But in Jesus, there is life. In Jesus, there is light. He has chosen to do that very work through you. The last thing that Jesus gives, the authority to his disciples, is... To administer forgiveness of sins. This is the last verse of this passage. Very confusing, very peculiar, but Jesus says this. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. I thought God was the only one who could forgive sins. And that is true. God is the only one who could forgive sins. But what happens when God gives you the authority to forgive exactly. sins. What happens when Jesus says, you now can do the very same things that I have done? Yes. Jesus' ministry was all about forgiving people's sins. Not even sins that are against him, but sins in general. And Jesus was all about forgiveness. And forgiveness can mean liberation, release, Release from guilt, freedom from shame, freedom from pressure and burden, freedom from fear. Forgiveness is life. Amen. Where there is life, there can be no shame. There can be no bondage. There can be no pressure, no guilt. Where there is life, sins are dissolved. Mm -hmm. And Jesus gives that authority to his disciples. So now, friends, let me offer a breath of fresh air to you today. As a pastor, as one who has been commissioned by Christ to bring breaths of fresh air to people, especially to the church, I want to offer or give you an opportunity to take a breath of fresh air. I don't know who you are. I don't know where all of you come from. I don't know what you've done this past week, this morning, last night. I don't know, but God does. 
And I want to offer a word of breath there, a, a fresh, a word of fresh, a fresh, a breath of fresh air to you today. Because the Holy Spirit, I'm going to take Jesus' word on this. I'm trusting in Christ when he says this. Yes. When you can forgive sins, they are forgiven. Uh -huh. And so I'm going to offer a time right now, wherever you're at. You can come up to the altars. You can kneel. You can just sit in your chair. You can do whatever. But let us spend some time really reflecting. Is there anything I've done wrong? Is there anyone I've hurt? Is there anything I said that didn't give life, but took life? Did I, did I uh, knock the wind out of people? Is there some shame that I'm experiencing right now? Is there guilt? Is there oppression? I offer you to come before the Father and to let it go. Release it. So would you bow your heads in a word of prayer? You can come to the altar. You cannot. You can do whatever you want. But I'm just going to offer this space of just coming to the Father and asking for forgiveness. Father, I pray wherever people are right now, and you know the hearts, God, so I'm trusting you on this. Father, I pray, Lord, that whoever is here right now who is experiencing shame, immense shame, whether it be from something that was done to them or something that they did to others. Father, I pray in the name and power of the Lord Jesus Christ that they may begin to heal. That your life may pierce through their hearts and let them be released from shame, from bondage. Father, if there's anybody in this place who is just stricken with a hard heart, full of pride, Envy, jealousy, wrath, anger, malice, or anything of that nature, God. I pray that your spirit would just release that, will give life and speak life, and provide a tender and soft heart, a heart that can be full of love. Father, if there's anybody in this place that has committed a wrong to a neighbor, or perhaps they have not given something good or perhaps something was given to them that was wrong Father I pray whatever the circumstance is that they may experience forgiveness they may experience justification that they may experience pardon and release from all guilt and Father whatever else that I am missing here depression, oppression, anxiety, panic. God, would your spirit just breathe life? Would your spirit be faithful and just bring a word of hope to wherever they're at right now? And Father, I pray that people here would open their hearts up to you. Would a conversation can begin? Would something happen in their lives that would be just powerful and just something that can only be accomplished through your spirit, God? So, Father, I ask this in the powerful and precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to invite the worship team to come up. <clears throat> Are you ready? <laughs> 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 Are you guys ready to respond to this word? Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let's sing through that last song. It's perfect for the sermon that Kevin brought us. <clears throat> Will you stand with me? Thank you, Father, for your incredible grace. The fact that without you, we literally would not have breath in our lungs. So let our breath praise you this morning.
Jesus. 